Hi everyone. I just wanted to pop on early so that I could get my computer going here. Um, yeah, so I'll give everybody time to, to jump on and join me. I have my laptop over here so I can see all the comments. like we're good we're good so I'm doing something new uh, I know a lot of people like to see the person that they're talking to or joining a live with so I'm well I'm facing the camera it's not something I'm entirely comfortable with but, <laughs> but um, I thought it'd be a good way for us to get to know each other you can get to know me I can get to know you and um, I just I don't have the software that does a smooth transition to flip down to my desk so when I do that you're gonna have to cover your eyes so that um, you don't get sick or dizzy or anything like that so yeah I hope you get comfortable we've got some stamping to do today and so this week I had two stamping events and I also had the packaging and the kitting and the shipping of my October creativity kit. So it was a really, really busy week. Um, that's for sure. But on Monday, so excited, I got to drive a couple hours away and stamp the day away with three new to me stamping friends. They're on my Stampin' Up! team and we each had a project that we designed for each other. And I'm going to put them on my blog um, probably next week. Yeah, so they're so cute. I learned so many new techniques and tips and, and different styles and we I was there all day. I got I think I ended up getting home at eight o'clock at night. So it was super fun. So shout out to Kathy and Tracy and the other Kathy, um, if you guys are watching. So I should probably introduce myself. I am Nicole Steele. I am the owner and the creator and designer of thejoyfulstamper.com and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So what that means is I love stamping. I love sharing stamping. I love teaching others how to stamp. So if you are looking to um, learn a new hobby um, and a hobby that can have great meaning and great purpose for you, um, this would be it, yes. And I would love to help you on that journey. So just contact me. You can email me. You can go to my blog and get my email address. You can message me on Facebook. And we can see how we can get you started on your stamping journey. So I, I'm so glad that, I, uh, that I, I stamp and I scrapbook. And I love sending cards to people with handwritten messages in them. And so often I hear back from people about how much they truly, truly enjoy getting those cards. So if you're jumping on, you're watching this live, welcome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join me. And make sure you uh, write a comment. Say hi, let me know you're here, where are you from, are you new to stamping, have you been doing this for a while? Um, and if you're watching the replay, go ahead and leave those comments too because I do go back and look at them and I will be sure to respond to you. So, hi Sharon. <laughs> how are you? Um, so, I am... Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so it, it was. It was a busy week. The other thing, too, is I sent out my October creativity kits. The featured bundle of this month was poinsettia petals. And if you're not familiar with my creativity kits, it's a full stamping kit that comes to you. And there's four projects in it. They're stepped up. And I create a video for each of those projects and the video is designed to make you feel like you are taking a class with me so it's slower paced you so you can follow along and it should feel like my goal was that you would feel like you were right here at the table stamping with me so and I always include $20 at least of new product in those kits I also type out the instructions so if you prefer to print those out and follow along you can do that too and I like to throw a little surprise into my kits. They're so fun to package up. And I just, I sent them all out and I'm super excited and I can't wait to hear everyone's reactions about it. Tomorrow I'm sitting down to design the November creativity kit. So if you're interested in that, I will be posting information about that once I have it designed. But um, the kits are $35 and that includes the shipping fee. So there's no hidden charges, there's nothing extra. And if you want to include that month's stamp set 
and dies or punched, whatever the bundle is, you can do so and pay just the catalog price. I pick up the shipping and the tax on that for you. You just need to let me know in your email when you sign up to receive that month's creativity kit. So I'm super excited about this new endeavor that I've added to the Joyful Stamper line. And I hope everybody likes them. Okay, so let's get to the exciting stuff that Stampin' Up! has. First off, um, and I'll show this when I flip the camera down. We've got Curvy Celebrations. This is a new bundle that is going to be available November um, 3rd to everybody. And you know what? I'm going to flip the camera down now so you can see it because it's just too hard to look at it. So close your eyes if you get dizzy. And I'm going to turn this around. Um, here we go. Okay, we are looking at my desk now, so if you have your eyes closed, you can open back up. Okay, so this is the Curvy Celebrations bundle. It's available to demonstrators now, so if you want it now, you can sign up to join my team and put this in your starter kit. Otherwise, it's going to be available from November 3rd through the 4th of January. So here are the things to know about this. Aren't these samples pretty? Here's the thing to know about this. This is the stamp set. This is the quite curvy bundle. So you get the stamp set and you get the dies. And the dies, they produce those curves. You can get those nice curved edges without having to um, cut it yourself and maybe make it a little wonky. I don't know. <laughs> but this is a discounted bundle. You can see they've discounted it 10%. This is going to be featured in the January through June 2021 mini catalog. Oh my goodness, you guys, can you believe we're talking about that already? But not really. We're not going to we're not going to jump into the future that far. Let's just enjoy the fall right now, right? But this is going to be in that mini catalog, but you can get it November 3rd. You don't have to wait. Then the other thing that is it is this set this is not going to be in the mini catalog. So if you want the curvy Christmas stamp set and the classic Christmas six inch by six inch designer series paper this is only going to be available November 3rd through January 4th and then this is gone this will not be in the catalog and I'm looking at the patterns of the six by six DSP and I'm seeing that although it is classic Christmas colors of cherry cobbler Sahara sand and shaded spruce the patterns are not necessarily Christmas so there's stripes there's checks, there's stars, and I can't quite tell what the fourth one is. Um, so you can use that. All. I think, I'm thinking this would be great for Valentine's Day. So not necessarily for Christmas, but again, this only available until January 4th. This is available, will be available in the mini catalog and also starting November 3rd. Now, the other thing you can do is you can get the Quite Curvy Variety Bundle, which would include the quite curvy stamp set, the curvy dies, the curvy Christmas stamp set, and the paper. You can get all of this with just one number, and they're discounting at 10%. So one number, discount of 10%, super easy to get it all. You just click and say, I want it all. So that will start November 3rd for customers, and it's going on now for demonstrators. So if you want to join my team, you can add it to your kit. Okay, next up, as always, my October host code. This is the way I reward all my customers and thank them for doing business with me because I so appreciate each and every one of them. Just add this to all of your orders under $150 and you can earn Joyful Stamper reward points. If you want to know more about my reward points program, just head to my blog, thejoyfulstamper.com, and there's a rewards tab at the top. I try to make my blog like a one-stop shop for all of you guys so that you can get all the information you need about the Joyful Stamper brand there. Then this, oh my goodness, is this not look like it's going to be the cutest kit ever for Paper Pumpkin? Oh, I love the box and those sweet scallops. I love the gingerbread theme and those colors oh, to die for. But here's the best part. If you subscribe with me in October, to um to for, to uh, get paper pumpkin i will put your name in a drawing to win a month for free and what the prize will be is 
a prepaid code and you can use that code on any month you want in the future. So all you have to do is head to my blog and click the kits tab and you can use the links in there to sign up um, to get paper pumpkins. So um, this is gingerbread themed and I think it's going to be gift card holders, but if you don't want to make gift card holders, there's always alternate ideas to make cards and other projects too, because Paper Pumpkin puts out a newsletter and they have a blog post, and I've been starting to include those in my weekly newsletter so that everybody, no matter how they're interacting with the Joyful Stamper and using their Stampin' Up! products, um, gets plenty of fresh inspiration because that is what I'm here for. And of course, the Designer Series Paper Sale, 15% off select packs. Anyone that orders from this sale in the month of October, I will send you a free four pack of handmade holiday cards. And if you wanna see some examples of my holiday cards, I have a Facebook page set up where I sell my cards, handmade cards by the Joyful Stamper, so you can see some of the Christmas cards you just might get for ordering with me from this sale. So lots of great um, designer series paper. I'm going to use some of it today. And if you want a catalog, always feel free to reach out to me to get one. I'd be happy to send you a catalog package. Okay, so let's get started with the stamping. Oh yeah, right? I'm going to work with the plaid tidying 6x6 six six inch designer series paper today. We used this at the stamping retreat I went to on Monday, and I actually don't have the full pack of this but I have a few sheets of it somebody gifted me with and I know it's part of the designer series paper sale and I really want to use it because I just I absolutely love these not only do I love the plaid patterns I love the colors of these plaids um, it just the way they mix them all together is just beautiful and I think it has a very masculine feel to it which can be quite difficult to achieve right so oh prizes before we before we go any further, prizes for sharing. So next week, the prize is going to be the Dainty Diamonds 3D embossing folder. All you have to do to win this, click that share button and then type shared in the comments. I really, really need you to do both of those things. Number one, because clicking the share button actually shares it and it helps me so, so much and I'm really grateful for that. And then typing shared in the comments lets me know that it was you that shared this Facebook Live video. And I will draw a name next week to win the Dainty Diamonds 3D embossing folder. So go ahead and share, please, and thank you. Okay, let's get started. I will show you the card that we made. So this is the original card that we made at the Stamping Retreat. Isn't it cute? I didn't design it. This was designed by Kathy Lester. She's a sideline on um, the team, and she used this plaid tidings paper. And, and um, I think this is lots of leaves, the dies that go with the lots of leaves set, and the dainty diamonds embossing folder. But what's really neat about this is she cut two slits in this cardstock and slid underneath these two panels here, the basic gray and the plaid tidings DSP. So I'm going to show you how she made those slits and then how she embossed on either side of this to get that smooth surface to stamp her sentiment on. I'm not going to recreate this exact card though. I'm going to use the plaid tidings paper that I have and I thought I would make mine masculine. Let me make sure I'm in the camera here. I never did check that. Okay. All right. Let's get started. Pull out my stack of supplies here. We're going to be using this bricks and mortar embossing folder and we're going to use some manly colors here. Okay, so I am starting with a five and a half inch by eight and a half inch piece of Misty Moonlight cardstock and it's scored down the middle at four and a quarter. So this is known as your standard A2 sized card and it will fit in any of our very vanilla or um, whisper white medium envelopes. Okay, the next thing I have is I have another piece of Misty Moonlight, and this one is five and a quarter inches by four inches. And I'm going to show you the little cutting trick that I learned. Okay, so take out your trimmer. And yes, I do not have a Stampin' Up! trimmer, but <laughs> you've heard me say this if you've watched this enough times. This trimmer, I have great sentimental attachment to it, and so I just keep using it. But your Stampin' Up! trimmer will work just fine. Okay, so what we are going to do 
is slide our cardstock out until it reaches the four inch mark. Okay, so this is the four inch, the four inch side is what's along the bottom of our trimmer here. Okay, now I want you to slide it over to the three inch mark and we're gonna close it and we're gonna put our cutter at the one inch mark here. And we're gonna, um, we're gonna cut from one inch to three inches, okay? Then we're gonna lift that arm and we're gonna slide our cardstock over again to the two inch mark. And I'm gonna close it and I'm going to put my cutter at, again, the one inch mark and I'm gonna make a cut from one inch to three inches. Okay, that's it. So what that did is it gives me a little slit in my cardstock right there. All right. Okay, and again, if you're watching, I'm, a, I'm Nicole Steele. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Feel free to jump in and say hello, say where you're from. Now I'm going to pull in my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine because we're going to emboss this piece with that bricks and mortar embossing folder and that's a 3d embossing folder so what that means is that I'm going to be using um, base plate one and plate four in this machine now what I'm gonna do I want to get embossing on to the left and the right of that slit but I don't want to emboss that slit itself simply because that's where I'm going to be stamping so what I'm going to do is put this in my embossing folder and I'm going to bring it to just, it's on the left side of the cardstock, and I'm bringing it up just to where the left side of that slip begins. And I'm going to run it through my machine. And remember, we run our embossing folders through the machine with the closed end going in first. That just saves on wear and tear of our embossing folders. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is take that out flip my cardstock around and I'm going to emboss this side um, of the slit. So I'm putting it up to the other edge of that and I'll run it through my machine using the same sandwich. We call it a sandwich. Whoop, my paper moved a little bit. Okay, there we go. Can you see that the bricks and mortar is embossed to the left and the right, but this part is free. Now you're probably wondering, what are you going to do with that big blank space right there? Well, that's going to get covered up because what I have now is I took some of that plaid tidings designer series paper that is on sale and I cut a four inch by one and three quarter inch piece of it. And then I took a piece of shaded spruce cardstock, and this one is four inches by two inches. So these two are exactly the same length, but different widths, so that we have a little border there. And I'm just gonna use the liquid multi-purpose glue to glue that on. So if you've ever thought about giving card making a try, I really encourage you to do so. I love sending cards out to people. So I am a driver for, I volunteer for an organization called Faith in Action where I take people to doctor's appointments and go grocery shopping with them in the lake. And what I like to do is I like to send them cards or sometimes when I'm dropping them off or picking them up, I will leave a card in their place, but I won't tell them so they find it later. And I absolutely love it when I hear back from them and they say how happy it made them. I mean, and I'm just doing something I love, right? Isn't that the best feeling in the world? Now what I'm going to do is this is going to get slid into that piece right there. And that's going to cover up that blank spot. Oh my gosh, isn't that so pretty? But we need to stamp there first. This makes me so excited. Okay, so I wanted to make this a masculine birthday card. So I pulled out Posted for You. And I want to use this happy birthday right here because I think that fits just right in that space. I'm going to be honest, I didn't test it before I came on here. So we're going to see how this turns out. Okay. I'm going to stamp it 
I want it to show up really well, so I'm going to just use Memento Black ink. And I'm going to stamp it right in the center of that strip there. Oh my goodness, that worked out so good. Don't you love it when things go right? Okay, now we will glue this to our card base. And I just used um, Misty Moonlight. I think I already said that. And there's just something about a background that's the same color as my card base that I, I really like. It's very appealing to me. But you could use other color combinations. You could use a Whisper White cardstock, whatever you want. It's up to you. Okay, this is not glued down yet, so I'll have to glue that down. Okay. And we're just going to use liquid glue on this, too. Oh, Sharon, you haven't gotten the brick embossing folder yet. That was actually gifted to me by somebody, and this is my first time using it. And I, I actually, I'm going to use it on my next project too because I cut an extra piece and embossed an extra piece just as a test run. And I kind of had an idea floating in my head, so I'm going to try it on camera <laughs> after this card. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay, now this next part might surprise you a little bit. Do you guys remember, and maybe you don't if you're new to Stampin' Up!, this punch and this set from last year's Occasions Catalog. It was designed to be a Valentine's Day set, but I thought I'm gonna use this outline image right here in this heart, and I'm gonna add a couple of these to my card. So I'm gonna use Bumblebee cardstock, and I'm going to use Shaded Spruce. And I'm gonna stamp both of them in Shaded Spruce ink. Okay. So if you are liking the look of these embossing folders, don't forget to share this video because I am giving away, I'm going to draw a name from those who share this video, the Dainty Diamonds 3D embossing folder. So you may be able to add one to your collection. Okay. And now we're going to use this punch to cut out these hearts. I love when stamp sets come with punches. Those are the bundles that I really go for because I think punch, punches are so easy to use and they take almost no time at all. And they're not very expensive. Okay, so I'm gonna put these hearts here. I'm gonna use dimensionals for this because I want those to be popped up a little bit. But I need to be mindful of where I'm putting the dimensionals because I don't want too much lift. So like I know I want them sort of like this. So I'm going to put some dimensionals on that side of this heart. And then I will put some um, on the right side of the shaded spruce heart. I can't believe this, but I'm actually getting low on my dimensionals. It's the horror. Yeah, tone on tone. Oh, what was I doing? What was I doing? I lost my train of thought here. Okay, there we go. And then last but not least, I know I said this was a masculine card, but I can't help it. I'm going to use this Misty Moonlight in color um, ribbon. It has this nice cotton twill feel to it, so it's, it's not girly. It's not like lacy and frilly and everything. And it'll work. Do you guys like looking at other people's craft spaces? So where I was on Monday, I saw our hostess's craft space and oh my goodness, she has the most beautiful window to look out of and my craft space is in my family room in the basement which has no window whatsoever. I'm really grateful for the little corner I've gotten that I can be with my family while I craft but I couldn't help being a little bit envious of the window that she has. <laughs> Bloom where you were planted though, right? There's a lot of magic that comes out of this little space down here in my family room. Okay, I used a mini glue dot to stick this on. I'm going to put it on that heart right there. 
And the one thing you might want to do is um, glue a piece of white cardstock to the inside of this because it'll make it easier for you to write on the message. And you certainly can stamp on it, add your own images, add another happy birthday, or you know, whatever you want to do. Um, maybe we can add another heart. Let's try that. Hope I already have it out. Just add another heart right there. And now you're done. You have a masculine birthday card using that plaid tidings designer series paper. So just pay attention if you're going to order this paper. Um, yeah, it is 15% is off, but it's a six by six inch pack and you're going to get 48 sheets of it. And you get quite a lot of patterns. You get all those. So it, there's a good variety in this pack. Very good variety. Okay, that's card number one. Oh, you live just off 81. Is that... I think that runs through Pennsylvania, too. That sounds familiar. All right, let me bring out the next one. Okay, so this is all the farther I got with this. But here's the thing. I know I want to use the Posted For You stamp set and the postage punch that goes with it. And I want to use the colors of Balmy Blue and Petal Pink. Okay, so that's that's what I know. <laughs> I had this extra piece of embossed bricks and um, mortar, misty moonlight piece, and I was like, well, I don't really quite know what I want to do. So let's just let's just see what happens. If it turns out to be an absolutely hideous card, we can just trash it, right? It's just paper. So let's just go with it and we'll see what happens. Okay, so this is the idea I had. I'm taking a Whisper White ink pad, and our Whisper White ink, it's what's known as a craft ink or a pigment ink. And what that means is it doesn't dry as fast as the dye based inks. So this is going to stay wet for a little bit longer. We can use the heat tool to speed up the process or just set it aside to dry, you know, any of those things. Um, but I'm going to take this whisper white ink pad and I'm going to lightly drag it across my background here. Let me get some scratch paper. And we'll try this. All right, let's see what happens. Now I'm going to do this really, really lightly. And my goal with it is to sort of pick up the raised parts, the raised bricks on this Misty Moonlight cardstock. And I'm going light because I want to make sure I don't add too much color because once I get this ink on here, I can't take it back off. Ooh, okay. I like this. I like this look. Are you guys liking this? And we'll just keep going until we are happy. Oh, I think I'm going to stop. I love that. Okay, so this, this is wet, but I don't want to emboss it because emboss, putting embossing powder on it and then melting it with the heat tool is going to give it a smooth, shiny look that I, I don't want for this project. I know that much. Okay, this is actually going to go onto this Misty Moonlight card base, but I never like to glue anything until the very end when I know everything is the way I like it. So I'm not going to glue it yet. I'm going to set it aside. Now, the other idea I had was to take some scraps of Balmy Blue and Petal Paint, and I want to stamp some of these images from Posted for You. I was thinking of doing um, one of each of those. So I'm gonna put those on some blocks. Set these up here. I'm not gonna worry about putting these on my blocks straight because I'm going to use a punch to punch the images out. There's this postage punch that coordinates with it so I can get it straight within the punch um, after I'm done stamping it. So not having to stamp it straight relieves a lot of the pressure. Now I'm going to use a balmy blue ink pad and I'm going to use a petal pink. 
and let's see how this turns out. Okay, I'll start with my bird image here. And put this one right there. And then I want another balmy blue and I'm gonna use the flowers and I'll stamp that one right there. Oh, that one might be a little bit too low. Let's do it again. Let me fit these inside the punch and see. I don't wanna have to, I don't wanna have stamped too low. Okay, I'm flipping it over. I'm gonna stamp them up a little bit higher on the paper here. Okay, and now the love I'm going to do in petal pink on the petal pink cardstock. So this is very tone on tone. And I am going to do the love. I want to do it this way. Oh, I think my stamp needs cleaned. <laughs> that came out green. All right, let me grab a baby wipe. Definitely don't want green on my car on this particular guard. So let's get that nice and cleaned off. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Have you guys ever done that? Gotten a surprise inking. Alright, let's try this again. Oh my god, let's look what I did to my ink pad. <laughs> oh, there's a clean spot over there we'll use. So the women I was stamping with on Monday, they saw my blocks and they went, Nicole, look at your blocks because they had ink and there was glue all over them. And I mean, honestly, I love my stamping supplies. I use them. I abuse them. I do. Um, and I don't always take the best care of them, but they're holding up really, really good. I just have fun with them. So what I did is I brought them home and I cleaned them all. I gave everything a bath. So my stamping friends should be very proud of me. Okay, let's punch these out. Do you guys keep your stamping stuff in pristine condition? I have to know this. Or are you like me? You like your things to look well loved, shall we say. Just use this punch and flip your punch over so that you can line your image up in the punch window and punch it out. Okay. See, petal pink and balmy blue together, they remind me of a baby card. But when I put them with this misty moonlight, it didn't seem so much like that. Okay. I feel like there should be something going across there, but I really don't want to hide that, that background. All right, let's get a sentiment. Which one should we use? I like just a note. I write a lot of cards just because, so I could definitely see myself using the just a note and I'm going to use my grid paper to line this up because it is red rubber and I can't see through it. All right, I have to figure out how I'm going to do this. Let's get a strip of white cardstock here. I always have these little strips left over from trim paper down to the side and we need some ribbon. I don't know, what do you think? Lace trim. Let me pull some out. It's got some lace trim. We can kind of tie this in a, a little bow here. Let's see. That's a little big. I don't know. Nope, I don't like it. I just I think I just want a clean and simple card here. We can put some embellishments on it. Okay, I'm going to stamp my greeting in um, Misty Moonlight. I don't have the Misty Moonlight ink pad, so I'm going to go ahead and use my marker and just color right on my red rubber just like this. And I'm going to stamp it on this white strip. That didn't come out so good. Let's try it again. Oh, 
what is going on here? I'm having some trouble today with this sentiment. Maybe I should just get off the card. Is that a sign? <laughs> Do you think? It might be. Um, let's see. Do I have any trim? No. Okay. Let's glue everything down. I like to use liquid glue whenever I emboss a piece because the surface is uneven. So it sticks to the, if the paper sticks together easier. Okay, I'm going to put these up on dimensionals. And I'm going to put two on each of these. Love. Let's make some room here. I think putting this on the easiest way to do this is to put this in the center and then line them up on either side. There we go. Okay. Now I will try this again. This is just a note. going to forget and I think I would like to tear this. And then what I'm going to do is take my bone folder and I discovered this by accident. If you take your bone folder and just work the paper back and forth, back and forth, eventually those cardstock fibers are going to start breaking down and you notice little lines and ripples in the cardstock that just give such a cool effect. Just be careful not to tear your paper, but you just keep going until you have it the way you like it. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's very, very faint white lines in there. And I just love that creased look to it. Okay, now I'm going to put this on with some dimensionals because I want to maintain that shape. So I'm going to put one in the curve right there, and I'll put one on the end right here. Okay, and I'm just going to put this on my card. Um, I kind of like things when they're not quite so straight, so I'm going to put that on there like that. Then I'm going to pull out, let's see, do we have iridescent pearls aren't going to work. There's some square vellum doilies. Oh, sorry. Hmm. Kind of embellishments would work. Maybe some just base rhinestones, huh? Hi, Lisa. How are you? Trying to decide what kinds of embellishments might just go with good old fashioned pearls because I think rhinestones are going to be too much for this. But if, ooh, let's try this. I know what we're gonna try. Let's color our pearls. Color, color them. What color should we do them? Should we do let's do balmy blue? Is there a balmy blue stamp and blends? I'm not really sure. What else? Some color pool party. Yes, there is. There's a ball blue right there. Okay. I love coloring my embellishments. I'm going to use my brush tip, though. And let's color some in all kinds of sizes. And if the light doesn't work, I'll go back and do the dark. Why aren't you stamping, Lissa? <laughs> it's been a busy day. All right, I'm going to color about five of these. 
Oh my goodness, I love this color on here. This light balmy blue is looking good. Okay, just go gentle because you don't want to damage the tips of your stamp and blends. Okay, now I'm going to scatter them around my card here. Um, let's see. I'm going to put some on my sentiment so that I get that to stand out. Okay, don't want to overthink this. Nothing good happens when we overthink stuff, right? And I have one more. Whoop. I feel like I need more, but we're going to stop. We're going to stop. Okay, so let me pull back out. That's a nice simple card, but I think what really stands out is this background. Rubbing that or dragging that Whisper White embossing folder over that is just, I love that. Wait, let me see what happens if I if I splatter some on that greeting. Ooh, I like that look. Ah, okay, I need to know when to stop. <laughs> okay, but I like the way that Whisper White ink pad picks up that brick embossing folder. So we have that, and then I made this masculine card today using, actually, Lissa, I think you were the originator of that idea where you cut the slit in the paper and tuck the, uh, the paper through it. So I've got that. Now, I made these. I don't have a project sheet today for you guys because I kind of made these in the last hour. So <laughs> I didn't have time to photograph or... Um, type anything up, but I hope you found them simple. They gave you some ideas and don't forget this paper's on sale, the plaid tidings, and don't forget to share this video so that I can enter you in the drawing for the Dainty Diamonds 3D embossing folder. So thank you so much for popping in and out today and watching the replay. I really, really appreciate it and I love stamping with you guys so, so much. So have a fantastic week and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye.